All right, so I've been asked quite a few times uh, what setup I use for small game hunting and stuff, or you know what I'm using, or I've been asked quite a few times too well, what the best setup is, and I'll be the first to tell you, no one can answer that for you. There's no such thing as the best. There's what works, there's what works for you, there's what you can afford, everything that, you know, kind of taken into consideration on that. Uh, I figure I'd do a little video, let you know what I'm using, and then let you know kind of what you could use or what you should look for for your situation. Um, there's a few things that need to go over on that. We'll go over them right now. First being what setup you're gonna use. Are you gonna use an air rifle, a 410 shotgun, or a shotgun in general, a 22, 17 HMR? You know, there's quite a few options. What you need to do is take into consideration the area that you're hunting. Do you have, you know, houses in close proximity? You know, 17 HMR or 22 probably aren't going to be your best bet. You might want a you know smaller shotgun, 410, 20 gauge shotgun, um, or an air rifle. So it's no one can really answer what the best one for your situation is. Out here, I, I have no one around. I mean, there's you know, snowmobile trails and stuff, but there's no houses you know that I have to worry about. They're so far away; it doesn't even matter. So, you know, 17 HMR 22 for small game out here is perfect. Uh, that's, that's one thing that you need to make up for yourself or, you know, a decision you need to make for yourself. Like I say, you know, out here, the 22, I can reach out 17 HMR. I can reach out and touch stuff a little bit further away than I could with an air rifle or with, a, you know, a smaller shotgun. So whatever one works for you in your situation, that's what you should go for. Second would be what type of setup? Would it be semi-automatic, bolt action, what brand? You know, there, there's no best. Again, it's what fits your budget, what works for you. Here I have a, a 17, or I'm sorry, this is my 22 caliber. Uh, it's a Savage Mark II. It's, you know, like I said, 22 caliber. It's a, a very accurate, very reliable. And that's something you need to take into consideration. The two main things is you have to look back in history. You know, what firearms have proven to be reliable and repeatable, meaning do they go bang and do they hit what you're aiming at every time they go bang or most of the time. If they, they fits the bill on both of that, you really can't go wrong. You need to take into consideration the manufacturer's warranty. Look that up. That's very important. You want someone that's going to stand behind their project or their, their uh, product that if they don't, you really don't want to buy from them. Um, I will say Savage, uh, you know, Ruger 1022 is an excellent choice, you know, for the 22 caliber Savage, you know, you can get up into the Tikas, they're very expensive for a 22. I personally would never pay that price for them. Not saying that if you did, it was wrong. Again, if it fits what you want and what fits, you know, what works for you, that's not a wrong answer. That's the best for you. This, this was the best for me. I, it, every time I pull a trigger, I usually hit what I'm aiming at, not all the time, and it's not the rifle's fault, it's my fault. But what manufacturer is going to stand behind their product, what manufacturer has put out throughout kind of their history good products, and what has put out accurate products. You really can't go wrong with that. I would say Ruger, Savage, um, a Remington, they, they've had their bankruptcy issues. I really, I don't know if I'd buy a Remington anymore. The, the, the list goes on, you know, there, there's plenty of, of good options out there. You just have to kind of go through and see what one you like the most. You know, as far as 410s, which I think are good for kids to start, they, they're small, they're lightweight. It, depending on what one it is, they really don't have a whole lot of recoil, and it's easier for them to hit what they're shooting at. You know, a squirrel's easier to hit with the 410 than it is a 22. A rabbit, same thing. So, it, you know, look at a single shot 410 for a kid. If you're an adult and you can afford it, get a semi automatic or a pump action. You know, there's, there's plenty of di different options out there. Again, look for a manufacturer that has over time put out a good product and stands behind their product because if they can't put out a good product and they don't stand behind it they're not worth buying uh there's you know cheaper versions of 22s i think rossi you know I, i've never i don't have no personal uh, experience with them so i can't speak on it if they're good or not i don't know but i know they're cheap they're they're affordable 
for a kid, they make little single shot uh, 22s, little, little rascals, I think they're called. I, I could be wrong on that. Um, but that's a good option to get a kid into hunting small game. It's, there's really, there's no wrong answer. If you can afford, if that's all you can afford, then that's the best. It's, no one can tell you wrong. You know, if they do, then tell them to piss off because who cares? You know, it's, it's you shooting it. It's what you could afford. It's what works for you. Uh, air rifles, that's when it gets tricky. I think my opinion will, will differ than other people's. I don't, I personally wouldn't go out and squirrel hunt, rabbit hunt with the 17 caliber um, break barrel at, at PCP prop maybe. Uh, but the break barrels, you know, the ones you buy at Walmart that bend in half and I just don't think they have enough uh, kinetic energy or foot pounds energy to safely take game at small game hunting distances. People do it though. I just personally wouldn't. Um, I would say a 22 caliber break barrel is where I would start. I have one. Uh, I, I would have no problem shooting a, a squirrel with that. With with that and with the 22s and 17 HMRs, don't just go buy one and buy one brand of ammo. Buy a few. If it's a pellet gun, buy a few different pellets because they're all going to shoot different. So if you get a 22 and didn't shoot a uh, you know a box of 22 you had sitting in your say your shelf or your safe or something, it didn't shoot it good. Don't just think that things junk. It probably just doesn't shoot that one good. You will find one that it shoots you know remotely accurate I guess or you know repeatability of it should be accurate uh, same with pellet guns I had one pellet gun I went through I think 10 different pellets before I shot I found one that didn't shoot six inch groups and it's very accurate now but I shoot I have quite a few pellet guns I, I mainly shoot PCPs a high uh, high pressure air uh, pre precharged pneumatics what they're called that's, I have no problem. I've shot squirrels out to about, I think, 80 yards, maybe, a little over 80 yards with it. it it's, that's nothing for them nowadays. They're very accurate, they're very powerful. That was a 25 caliber, by the way. But with the PCPs comes price. So that's, that's really gonna put you up into the next bracket because of all the, the air that you need, the air tanks, the pumps, and you're gonna be up there in the price on those. So I would say if you're looking to get into this, me personally, get a 22 long rifle, either the a bolt action or a, a semi-auto. You're really not going to go wrong with that. Four uh, tens for a kid, get a little single shot if they can handle the pump, the weight of it, and you know they can you know uh, consistently rack the shells. Get a pump because it gives them the opportunity for a follow-up shot that might make or break them getting the the first rabbit of their life or something i remember my first rabbit was a single shot 410 so that should stick in their head you know something like that getting their first you know animal out hunting and that's what keeps kids coming back and keeps a sport going next is scope or the optic um that's that's a very subjective uh, uh, topic I guess because what I might prefer for an optic you might not prefer this one here is the uh, vortex it's a diamondback tactical I think it's a little overkill um, it's it's one I bounce back and forth between firearms until I get you know I'm gonna buy a dedicated one for this sooner or later but right now it's sitting on top of this because it's the only one I had but look for something, you want about a 12 power at least, because you can shoot, uh, you know, if you're out 30, 40 yards, it, it brings the object closer, makes you a little more, doesn't make you accurate, but it lets you, uh, it allows you to be more accurate because you can see a smaller point on that animal. Look for a company that has a good warranty, that has consistently put out good products and someone that stands behind their products. Vortex, lifetime warranty, you can't go wrong with them. Loophole, can't go wrong with them. You can get down to the Nikon, Bushnell, um, Redfield. There's a lot of different optics out there that are good, that are cheap, they're affordable. That's something to take into consideration. Another thing to take into consideration is if you ever want to hunt with a suppressor. I, if you ever see any of my hunting videos, I'll almost always have a suppressor. Not because I think I'm cool, uh, it's because I care about my hearing. And they definitely work to bring a lot, most firearms, depending on what you're shooting, down to a hearing safe level. 
I don't need my ears ringing my whole life. It's, you know, I care about that. Another thing it does too is if, like, say chipmunks, I, usually when I go chipmunk hunting, there's a lot of them running around. You know, they usually congregate together. So if, say I shoot one, and 15, 20 feet away, he has a, one of his buddies with him. Well, this is quiet enough with subsonic ammo that the the second one usually doesn't. It hears it, but it's more curious. Like, man, what was that noise? So it lets me transition from the first one over to the second one. I can shoot both of them. Same with squirrel. But as far as uh, suppressors go, that's the uh, Griffin Armament uh, Optimus Micro. Let's see if I can get it in there. This is, it's rated for up to 22,250 uh, with the right adapter. Um, for, you don't need that. You can get a dedicated 22 caliber suppressor. Those are quite a bit cheaper, about half price. You still have to pay your $200 tax stamp, so that's something to take into consideration. Uh, do you want to buy one just for a 22, or do you want to buy one that you can switch from a 22? up to a 22 250 so you got your 223s 556 five, um, 17 hmr 22 250 you know anything in between something like that will it might not work as quiet as a dedicated 22 caliber uh, suppressor but it'll give you more options save you money too so that way you don't have to buy three or four you know to put on different firearms you can just switch it back and forth I shoot subsonic ammo because it, it quiets the report of the rifle down. Um, usually whatever I'm shooting, that's that's plenty enough. If you get, like I said, if you get something, whatever it is, a 410 won't matter, a uh, shotgun or anything, type of shotgun, but get, get about five or six different types of ammo, different grains, different, well, you know, velocity ratings and try them out because it's always going to shoot one better than it shoots the others. Same goes for your, you know, any rimfire or pellets for any pellet gun. That's it, it makes a big difference. So don't just look up what's the best ammo for 22. There is no possible way anyone could ever answer that. I promise you that, because there are too many variables: the muzzle velocity, the twist rate, the the chamber tolerances, the tolerances within the barrel, the length of the barrel. Everything comes into consideration on that. Same goes for pellets for pellet guns. Accuracy, no one can really tell you what the most accurate rifle is. Uh, again, you have to look over the, the course of history. What ones have shown to be accurate uh, throughout their, their span of you know rifle making, I guess. You know, Savage has always done good. Uh, Remington, Ruger, uh, there, there's so many guys just like they're so jumbled up there there's so many different ones but best thing to do is go out shoot groups and get an idea at different yardages what you're shooting just because you shoot a tight group at 25 yards doesn't mean at 50 or 75 yards you're going to shoot a tight group that's on you to figure out if the the firearm that you choose is accurate at those distances so you can safely and humanely take an animal best thing you can do sight it in at 25 yards move back to 30 35 and just keep stepping yourself back and just seeing how tight of a group you can keep at that with the shotgun pattern your shotgun get 10 yards away shoot a piece of cardboard and then go 20 yards away shoot a piece of cardboard go 30 yards shoot a piece of cardboard and step yourself in between there and just look at your pattern and see at, at what yard can you keep a tighter group to cover, say, a squirrel's body or a rabbit's body or a quail or whatever you're going after. That way you don't shoot too far away and pepper them with some lead shot and then they just go off and die because of lead poisoning or something. You know, you want to do it humanely and uh, safely. But other than that, you know, the to recap on it, I, like I said, the suppressor that's a Griffin armament works great. Savage Mark II, 20, uh, 22 caliber works great. Vortex Optic, that works great. You know, you, you want a sling too. Don't forget a sling because trust me, I forgot it before and it sucks carrying this thing around through the woods. I still do it because it's fun, but you want a sling on there. 
So hopefully that helps, you know, helps out and answers some of your questions and maybe some of you have been asking what I have, what I shoot with, my opinions on stuff. Hey, you know, get your kids out there, let them have fun. Cause if we don't get kids out there, we don't keep this sport going, it's gonna die. It, it's gonna go away, especially these days when everyone wants to take these things from us. It's, we need to keep this going. I think, uh, I think we're doing a good job though. Hope it helps and I'll see you on the next one.